So here I, want, I just want to explain um, how an individual can basically um, take some actions on her own and um, to go back to the point of uh, unlevered. Uh, remember in class we talk about this example, uh, a firm was uh, initially unlevered and is considering borrowing some money um, to go on leverage and then we talk about uh, the Modigliani and the Miner theorem, um, a proposition one which says that capital structure uh, which basically means debt equity ratio doesn't matter to affect uh, the firm value and um, they proved that proposition based on uh, this so-called homemade leverage. Um, in class, we talk about example uh, when an individual, if she um, enjoys debt, so she likes uh, the cash flows uh, which are um, coming from when debt is in place, then what she can do is to borrow on her own uh, and I assume that she can borrow at the same interest rate and this page is what we discussed in class so for example she can buy 40 shares of this uh, unlevered firm and uh, we in class we did the calculation the EPS of the unlevered, unlevered firm under the three possible um, economy states is these numbers. So if she buys 40 shares of this unlevered firm, um, the price per share is $50. So she should use 40 times 50, which is $2,000. But since she likes debt, so she can, what she can do to get to the same debt equity ratio, uh, as the firm, remember, remember now the firm is unlevered, but the individual decides to take some leverage on her own, and the purpose of doing that is to get the same cash flow as the firm with debt, with the same debt equity ratio. So, out of this two thousand dollars, she used uh, eight hundred dollars as the borrowed money from the margin account uh, we talk about margin account in class and why she used 800 dollars because 2000 minus 800 is 1200 and so 800 over 1200 that's two third and though that's going back to the same debt equity ratio as the firm that's why here we uh we need her to borrow 800 dollars at the same interest rate and in doing that, we should in class, actually she goes back to the case of ROE uh, for a firm with leverage. Um, so that's why we call the whole main leverage. Basically, um, individual can borrow on their own and they get to the same uh, return as a levered firm. In other words, they don't need the firm to borrow on their behalf because they are just equally happy to borrow on their own and that's why the capital structure doesn't matter. So that's one way to show it. And in class, we didn't show the second way how to use the homemade leverage. Here I call it unleverage uh, because it turns out um, in the leverage case, the individual likes that. So for an unlevered firm, she can borrow on her own and uh, goes back to the case, go, goes to the case of a levered firm. But here, she he's dealing with a levered firm from the start. So, but she doesn't like that. So she wants to go back to the case of an unlevered firm. Uh, but now remember, the firm is levered. So she wants to delever or unlever go back to the unlevered case. So this table shows what she can do. Um, so the unlevered, the levered firm, the EPS, we did the calculation in class under the three states, 
uh, one dollar and fifty cents, five dollar sixty-seven cents, nine dollar eighty-three cents, uh, respectively, on the three states. But now we need her to to buy twenty-four shares of the levered firm. Uh, remember, now the starting state is the levered firm, but we want to go back to the unlevered case. So um, we buy. Uh, she buys twenty-four shares of this levered firm and that requires uh, of that gives her now we want to show uh, how she can actually get back to the case of um, the cash flows for unlevered firm so she buy if she buys 24 shares she is having um, uh, this much of the earnings total earnings one dollar and fifty cents times 24 shares uh, that's 36 share, uh, 36 dollars in total for this 24 shares of equity she buys and similarly under expected state it's five dollars and 67 cents times 24 shares that gives me 136 dollars total in the earnings and the final expansion that gives me three dollars and thirty six cent uh thirty six three hundred and thirty six dollars in total for the earnings but what's different from the previous slide uh, when we have the case for the homemade leverage this homemade on leverage basically she's trying to do the operate uh, when she buys 24 shares of this levered firm this levered firm uh, even though she doesn't have debt on her own as an individual, but since she buys into the shares of a levered firm, so her cash flows will be the cash flows for a firm with debt. And in the example we showed in class, we noticed actually the difference between the cash flows um, to a shareholder under the debt that's the, under the proposed structure compared with the cash flows to a shareholder uh, without debt. So now since she buys into a levered firm, even though again she doesn't have debt on her own as an individual, but since she buys into a levered firm, her cash flows will be the cash flows of a levered firm. But uh, as we said, she doesn't like that. She wants to go back to the cash flows for unlevered firm. So what she can do is, no, she no longer wants to borrow on her own. Remember, now she's like taking a debt on her own already because she's buying into the debt of a firm, right? So that's, it's like uh, having a debt on her own already. So she wants to reverse that position. So what she can do is to buy some debt. What, what that means is to lend some money to the firm. To, to become a creditor of the firm. So that's what we mean by buy some of the debt. It's like a buying some bond, right? When you buy some bond, when, the, when you invest in the bond market, you become a bond, bond holder. So you are entitled to receive the periodic coupon payment or interest payment uh, from the firm. Same thing here, she buys $800 of the debt. So why $800? Remember 24 shares at 50 shares $50 per share, that's, uh, let me just use this um, notes. So 24 shares times $50 per share, right? That's $1,200. But remember, this is, even though this is all her, her money, but this has this generates the cash flows which uh, a firm with a debt has. So this uh, this is the this even though she buys only the shares equity, but since the shares is a shares of a lever firm, so her cash flows will be the cash flows of a lever firm. So what we this one it is like the net investment after. So we can think about this as Initially, she buys $2,000 back to the case of the homemade leverage. $2,000 then 
she borrowed $800, right? So she net, her net worth, this is called net equity or net worth is $1,200, $1,200. So we can think about this $1,200 this way. So it is like she buys $2,000 of the shares and then she sells this much of the shares for equity firm, for a lever firm. So now we want to rewind, unwind this position. So why we, we don't, why don't we add it back? How can we add back this 800? Remember this 800 is the money of borrowed, is the amount of the money borrowed. So now if we want to unwind this position, we just push her to invest, to become a rather than a borrower, become a lender. So that's why we add this $800. So now it's, she's connecting some interest from the firm. She's connecting the interest the coupon from the firm. So, and in doing that, she basically has unwinded, unwinded her position, right? Her position, it, her position is like 2,000 minus that. And the minus part is the borrowing. So when we add back, when we net her to be the lender, we basically have unwinded the position of borrowing. So then she goes back to the case of an unlevered case. Okay, so that's why how that's how we can uh, do the homemade unleverage, and that's why you you have this plus interest on eight hundred dollars at 8% interest rate. This 8% simply is the same as the interest rate by the firm. So you have $64, 64, 64, right? But before that, remember here, you less interest on that because here you borrowed on your own, but here you plus, you add, and because you lend money out, you lend $800 out. That's your, um, you become a creditor. So your net profit is the sum of these two. One part comes from the earnings, another part from, comes from the uh, interest payment. So the total is 100, 200, and 300. And then the ROE out of this 2,000. Remember here you have how much to total uh, investment? You have 2,000, right? Because here is uh, 1,200, and then you add 800. So that's, that's going back to the $2,000 investment. That's your total equity. That's your total worth. So you should divide net profit by the $2,000 of total worth. That's your total equity. Um, so that will give you uh, the 5%, 10%, and 15%. So if we compare this number with what we have over the uh, the current structure um, in class, we also have figured out the ROE for under recession 5%, expected 10%, and expansion 15%. Right? If you go back and check your next year slides. So that's what we found. So basically here we have used this so-called uh, homemade on leverage to net the individual go back to the case of uh, unlevered and so she her, by that we mean her cash flows will be the same or her return will be the same ROE will be the same for the individual if she borrows or lends money on her own. So in this case, he, she actually lends money out. She lends the money out. Uh, she become a lender. So she is connecting the interest payment. So that's why it's called homemade unleverage, uh, because she wants to go back to the case of unlevered firm. And if she simply lends the money on her own, in this case, she's going back to that unlevered case for the firm. Even though here, actually, we're dealing with a levered firm. So she's actually, by lending the money on her own, she's going back to the case of an unlevered firm. And that's why 
by these two examples, home, either homemade leverage or homemade leverage, we have seen that the individuals don't need the help of a corporation in terms of borrowing money or lending money. And a key assumption here is that they both enjoy the same interest rate. And if the firm can enjoy, can um, borrow at a lower interest rate, then the conclusion will change. Then the individuals would want the firm to borrow on their behalf because it's cheaper for the firm to borrow for them than them to, to borrow on their own. But since we made the assumption that both corporations and individuals can borrow at the same interest rate, so the individuals do not uh, a kind of uh, indifferent for the firm to borrow on their behalf. So that's why we have the uh, Modigliani and the Miner population one. The capital structure is uh, irrelevant for the firm value. All right, so I just want to use this uh, chance to talk further about the case of this homemade unleverage, which is kind of an operate case of the homemade leverage case, which we discussed in class. Uh, because one of the homework questions actually is related to this um, um, homemade leverage. So that's why I want to spend some time here talking about that.